If your setup is sounding just like mine there, where you hit a key and the sound comes out half a second later, I'm gonna show you some tricks and tips in this video to reduce latency through a number of different ways with live settings and instrument optimization. So let's jump into that. You see, it takes time to generate and process audio. So the moment you hit a key or a pad on your MIDI controller, it's gonna take some time for your computer to actually generate and process that sound, even if it's just a little tiny bit of time. So your computer, on the other end, receives that trigger, then generates a sound, whether it's with a synthesizer that has a generative waveform or some kind of sampler that's playing back a sample. Then you might take that raw sound and process it a bunch with filters and effects and things that are built into that software instrument. Then we might even add an audio effect. We might add EQ, compression, saturation, distortion, and so on, and things that will also make it sound nice, but it's going to take up a lot more CPU resources and inherently, may be adding more latency as well. But we're not done yet. Your track could be living inside a group, and that group could have another EQ, another compressor, another set of audio effects that could also be delaying that signal a little bit with more latency. And then that group goes to the master, which might also have more audio effects. So you might have a limiter on there. You might have a multiband compressor and so on, and different things that may enhance the signal of your master, but may inherently be adding more latency to your signal. So I'm gonna show you some tricks on managing this and how to lower this and what things you can optimize and get away with while recording to make the most responsive and playable instrument. Now, I just wanna mention that if you are using an audio interface, make sure to grab the latest drivers and firmware from your manufacturer. Sometimes there's updates being pushed out for just improved stability or performance. So make sure you have those so there's no problems on that side. And if you're in Windows, but you're not using an audio interface, make sure to grab the ASIO for all driver. This is an awesome optimized audio driver for Windows that's just gonna make your life and performance of live a million times better. So make sure you grab that. We'll talk about how to set that up in the next segment here. But if you're on Mac, you should be good with the standard drivers, just the built-in ones from Apple are actually pretty solid. So with that out of the way, let's jump into live and check out some of these different settings. Before we play any instruments, let's actually head to live's preferences. Under the audio tab, make sure you have the right output device selected. Here's where you would select your audio interface with the correct driver or the ASIO for all driver on Windows if you're not using an interface or if you're on Mac without an interface like I am today, I will just use the built-in output as my output device. Now, looking down at the latency option here, what I'm interested in is the buffer size. For this project, I actually have the buffer size set to 512 samples, which actually is quite high. For low latency audio in live, you want to choose the lowest buffer size that your system can handle while still providing clean audio without any pops, clicks, or artifacts. This tends to be around 64 to 128 samples, but you know we'll adjust it as we go, so feel free to come back to this screen in your preferences as we make changes to our project that will optimize the CPU performance. For this project, I'll set the buffer size to 128 samples. When you enable ARM recording on a MIDI track, you should be monitoring your input by default, but you can change these settings as well if you just toggle the IO options here on the right. Just make sure that you leave them set to auto for any MIDI software instruments. Now, if you'd like to add audio effects in real time to a software instrument, like I'm doing with this piano, you'll want to choose low latency audio effects and plugins to avoid inherently adding more latency. You can check the added latency from each device in your chain by simply hovering over that device's title bar with your cursor. Many of Live's stock devices offer little to no latency with the right settings. You can go through each effect that you'd like to optimize and check if you can disable any options like oversampling, high quality, and even different resolution modes. Compressors and limiters tend to also have an option called look ahead that will actually delay your original signal by a few milliseconds as well. So you might wanna turn those off or just delete them entirely while you are recording. In my case, I'll get rid of this EQ and compressor since they are adding a little bit of latency. And instead I'll use this single mixing channel strip rack that I made. This one offers zero latency and it's also light on CPU. Keep in mind that your results may vary if you are using third-party plugins and effects. Now it's important to notice that if you do have a number of tracks already in your session, you may have some devices and plugins adding latency that is also affecting your other tracks. This can be a little bit confusing, but essentially live is attempting to synchronize all of your tracks 
despite of any latency variation between the different tracks and the devices and effects that are loaded on those tracks. This is called delay compensation in live. If you're not sure what that means just yet, it just makes your music and tracks timing as tight as they should be for playback and music production. So to get around this for any track that is being monitored, you can use the reduced latency while monitoring option up here. This option is usually unchecked by default, but it may be just what you need if you're still having problems with latency during tracking or recording. This essentially bypasses the delay compensation setting for any tracks that are being monitored. Before moving on though, it's important to check if there's any effects in a group where that track is living on. Any effects that are delaying the signal even by just a small amount will affect the performance of that instrument as well. On top of that, any effects that are on your master will also affect latency performance. So let's see what I have here. And look at that, so I have a limiter on here from Ozone, but it's actually adding 67.8 milliseconds of latency to my entire project. So that means any tracks that I try to play that are essentially going through my master are going to be delayed by that many milliseconds, making pretty much everything unplayable. So I'm gonna get rid of that completely and I'll turn up the volume on my headphones instead. Now let's see how much latency we have with our keyboard. For low latency performance, it's important to use software instruments and effects that do work efficiently for the buffer size that you set earlier. If you've already gone through any effects that are affecting your instrument, there's still a couple more parameters in the software instrument that you can turn down or even turn off completely to improve the performance of the CPU. If you do this, you can then lower the buffer size in the preferences and then have snappier and even more responsive performance from those instruments. In most software instruments, unison modes tend to be a big culprit for increasing your CPU load. You can dial back the number of unison voices in instruments like wavetable and analog. In operator, simpler, and sampler, this is referred to as spread, and it only uses up to two unison voices when they're set to 100%. In addition to this, if you're working with audio clips, check if you're using the complex pro mode for a number of clips that are being played at the same time. This algorithm may be eating a lot of your CPU resources as well. So try changing it to the regular complex mode or even beats mode for max efficiency. You can turn all these settings back up later when you're done tracking and latency is no longer a concern. Ableton has an awesome guide on some other key parameters to watch out for when optimizing CPU performance. I'll throw the link in the description so you can check that out too. You can freeze tracks in live whenever you're looking to reduce the CPU load even further. To do this, Simply right-click on a track and select Freeze Track from the pop-up menu. When you freeze a track, Live takes a moment to render all the audio necessary for that track and freezes it in place. After freezing, you won't be able to make any changes to the devices on that track though. Whenever you play back a clip from a frozen track, Live will actually play back a rendered audio version of that clip instead of playing it in real time with all the devices, plugins, and effects. You can unfreeze any frozen tracks just by right-clicking on them again. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope this has helped you out. And if it did, please consider leaving a like or subscribe. Your support is really what keeps this channel going. And to those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. It's super appreciated. I'm actually working on some really cool stuff, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, if you did like some of the racks that I was showing off to lower your latency, like those mixing strips, uh, you can find those over at faceloop.online. I'll put a link in the description there so you can just click through. Uh, find it on their packs. There's a couple packs that are free there for you. And otherwise, thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you in the loop.